how much do you allow circumstances to kind of enter your mind when you're heading into a start like this? I mean, you guys had lost two straight games, and I mean, this is historically, you know, the math says it's a huge swing game for you. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a thought. Um, you know, as a pitcher, it's kind of on you, um, a lot of it. So, um, you know, you're definitely thinking about it, you know, coming into the game. And um, I don't know, you know, I, I know the bullpen was taxed a little bit, so I needed to go deep. And, you know, obviously that wanted, I wanted that to be quality innings. So um, I was able to do that, go deep into the game, save the bullpen a little bit, and, uh, you know, get out of there with a the lead. Anthony? Knowing that, to what extent do you at all change what you're doing, knowing that, you know, you they need you to go at least six, maybe seven? Um, I mean, you don't try to change it up too much just because I always try to do that. I always try to go deep. But, you know, in a, in a game like this, you kind of get the feel for it early on. And then, um, you know, they're aggressive. So I, I try to use that to my advantage um, after the first few innings to just get quick, quick outs and, um, you know, I know my pitch count was up a little bit early on, so I was just trying to limit that. Uh, the rest of the games, get quick outs and uh, make, you know, pitches where I needed to to be able to do that. Separately, you know, as you take a step back and, or people anyway, take a step back and look at your body of postseason work over the past two years, your name starts to get tossed around with some of the all-time greats. So what do you make of that? Um, I mean, it's, it's cool. It's special. Um, take pride in it. And, you know, there's been a lot of great pitchers that pitch in the postseason. Um, a bunch of them probably have more innings and body of work than I do, but you know, it's I try to do the best I can with what I have, and um, you know, it's, it's special to be named with a lot of those guys. So, you know, the um, I don't know, it's cool, it's special. The back on the right, Zach. When a runner was on, just how did you feel like you contained those situations well and, and limiting any damage getting done? Yeah, uh, coming into the game. Um, coming into the series, we all know they're fast, they're speedy, and they like to take bases. So, um, you know, we all talked about it before the series, and, um, you know, a guy gets on, you, you got to be careful with him. You got to change up your looks, change up your times to home, maybe do something a little different here and there, um, you know, but don't get outside of yourself at the same time. Don't try to, you know, slide step maybe when you normally don't or something like that. But because um, you want to make your good quality pitches at the same time. Uh, to follow up on what you're saying, as a pitcher of your caliber, is there a special level of focus that you unlock in those kinds of situations? I mean, you know, certain guys, you know, Corbin on first, um, obviously you don't pay more attention to them than, you know, maybe somebody else. But, um, you know, that's learning over the years what you have to do to limit base runners getting the second. Once they're in second, they're usually in scoring position, right? So especially with somebody with, you know, his speed or other, you know, other guys on that team. But um, so you just try to limit them getting the second base by, you know, changing up your looks, like I said. The left side in the back. What made the four seem such a good pitch for you tonight? Um, I was able to locate it. Um, the shape of it wasn't always the same. You know, I was pulling some, which worked to my advantage a couple of times. Um, and then some were, you know, kind of running arm side. So, um, you know, I think, you know, people kind of go to effectively wild. I wasn't really wild, but, you know, it wasn't always doing the same thing. So I think that played to my advantage. Okay, last one's for Zach. Back to David. You had a couple stretches where, you know, two outs on two pitches, <coughs> you know, two outs on six pitches. Yeah. How big were those um, just to kind of, Keep that. Obviously, you can't really plan on that. I don't yeah. think, but but to keep your pitch count down and give you a chance at the seventh. Well, yeah. I mean, that's kind of going back to what we talked about was you know trying to after those first couple innings, getting it you know figured out what their game plan is, that type of stuff to just go right after them. I know they're going to be aggressive. I know they're going to be swinging. They're probably looking for a fastball, but I'm also going to throw the fastball and just try to command it the best I can. Um, you know, when you get ahead of guys, put them away quick. Um, but you know, the defense. It's probably the best they played behind me all year, and it was it was really cool to you know watch them do their thing out there. Stott, Hart made a good play. You know, Castellanos cutting the ball off, didn't let it get to the wall. You know, little stuff sometimes makes a difference for us, makes our job a lot easier. Um, you know, keeping going first instead of letting them get the second. So, 
um, you know, I appreciate that, and um, you know, and they made my job a lot easier tonight. And then what was the conversation, if any, um, before that seventh inning? Jose was warming up. You were at what 92, 93 pitches, yeah. I think. Topper just asked if I was good, and I said, yeah, I felt great. So um, I was going right back out there. And then uh, one last one. Every time you kind of ran into a little bit of adversity, you, you, you responded even yeah. great in that seventh inning. Yeah. Um, is that something you pride yourself on? For sure. Um, like I said, you know, you just don't try to let him get the second. Uh, don't let him get easy for him. And, um, you know, the, the first inning, the guy was on, what, first and third. And, um, you know, that's really when you got to bear down. Um, you can't let them get, you know, momentum at home. The crowd will get back into it. You try to shut that down as best as you can and uh, let your guys get the momentum. We'll finish up with Barry. Zach, uh, considering last year going into the World Series, you could have a rematch against the Astros again. It would be the first time that's happened with two teams playing each other since like the, the 70s. What, what did you take out of that? And I want to go too far ahead, but how much better you think this team is and how better prepared it is to go to the next round than it was last year? Yeah. Like you said, we can't think of, think ahead too much, but um, you know, if you were to make it there and they make it there, it's it's pretty cool. Uh, it's really hard to do making it to the World Series, so two teams to make it there back to back would be um, pretty awesome. But um, I think we got you know a better team than last year, and uh, you know we added some guys in the bullpen, added some bats, some gloves. So um, yeah, I think we'll be in a good position, but we can't think ahead too much. You know, we got to play uh, the game on Monday and get back to Philly where we like to play and um, you know I know they're going to be very excited for it. All right, thanks Zach. We'll see you back thanks, in the